always comes to this. guys back again to do another tattoo progress update today where i last left off i uh, had showed off the red on my face here and my second pass uh earlobes so the red and the earlobes are healed now pretty well fully i i say fully and often people will say oh it's not fully it's only been a week well this stuff doesn't really change much after a week so as far as i'm concerned it is fully there are some people out there that uh, will think that it's going to break down more as time goes on, but you get into the real extremes of like many years, sure, but those people are in the camp of um, thinking this rose wouldn't be here in six weeks, and uh, we haven't hit this in over a year. So um, most people, when it comes to color and white on black, are assuming that um, as the weeks and, and days and months roll on, it's all just going to vanish one day, but... I'm here to tell you, uh, none of this stuff has been done for a very long time, and it's basically stayed where it was after the first week. So all the important information is uh, kept and lost within the first week. Everything after that seems to age at the same rate as any other tattoo. You can, uh, you can either take the word, my word for it, someone who's done tons of this, or you can take the word of an internet troll that has no idea what they're talking about. I'll leave that up to your discretion. With that said, I really like how the red healed this time. It's a uh, much, much more vibrant red now. You can see it's got a little of that dryness still. Um, this was much more my vision for the red on black. Um, I wanted it to be dark, but I wanted it to be solid. And uh, the first time we did this, it was over uh, multiple layers of black. Uh, and even the, the darkest black. So the darkest black in our experience has been Panthera Triple X or Gloom. Um, and I just actually recently addressed this on Remy Reacts when someone asked me if you could cover um, Panthera because it's so dark. And here's your proof. All this white and uh, red and all this is done over um, Panthera Black. So you can go over any black. It does not matter. Uh, this is three passes now. I don't think we would have got the same result as we did if we just kept hammering pass after pass. Uh, the second pass immediately after was, you know, fairly or s roughly, I think it was like two months after, it was fairly important because um, it wasn't very red yet. It was pretty dim in there. And so the second pass got it to a level where I was okay with it. And then I let it rest for a very long time before hitting it again. And then it became more like a red on red and now we have it where it's maybe even a little bit more red than the neck. But as I mentioned in the last video, I do plan on uh, uh, perhaps going in here again uh, when we do the red and white highlights here. Um, as this stuff was only done one time with red, it's been done twice with white. If we hit it again, it will be incredibly vibrant and uh, I'll be pretty happy with that. As you can see here, we have white and red on black in my chin. The chin is notoriously hard to um, get any ink to stay in. I know so many people with patchy chins. Um, a friend of mine shop just got her chin done. Um, one of the only people I know in person has their chin tattooed, and I'm really curious to see how hers does. But um, it's always been like tattooing a knuckle or some other coarse area, like a nipple or something where it just doesn't like to take the ink and uh, it, it bleeds a lot. So whenever you're bleeding a lot, you're losing a lot of what you're putting in as well. Um, so I'll be curious to see how hers does. But I, I already told her that, you know, my chin has been tattooed nine times now. We did it again this week. And uh, that's just in keeping with the rest. This time it didn't bleed much. And uh, the red and white are staying really well on my chin. Even before this pass, the red was pretty solid in there. Um, the lobes are much better this time. They are pretty well perfect black now. There's some light splotchiness in the backs, but realistically, 
There's nothing you can really see. And I don't think we need to do it again. I think some of that stuff will iron out. Um, and what doesn't iron out won't be noticeable. So this is more what I was expecting anyway. And again, these pieces at the top, some of these are uh, they're still flaking off. I haven't really been lotioning the tops of my ears. Um, more not because I'm specifically not doing it, but because I'm almost forgetting that they were tattooed. <laughs> And uh, it hasn't really mattered. Your, eye, your ears don't really absorb the aftercare quite as well as other skin anyway, in my experience. It seems like um, there's not much tissue for it to go into. So when I was putting Aquaphor on my ears originally, and even the second time I put a little along the, the base of the lobes here, um, it seems more to sit on top of the ear rather than soak into the ear. Uh, I don't know if it's just there's not as much space for it to absorb or what but it just would kind of gunk up and sit there and be shiny and and kind of wet looking and it's never really what you want from a healing tattoo you kind of want your aftercare to absorb into it if you ever have it where it's sitting on top of it and it's like collecting bacteria and you know trapping things to the healing surface that's not good so if you can't get it to absorb in then it's probably better to leave it so this time I used much less and not that it mattered. I'm not worried about infection at this point. I've, I've been tattooed thousands of times realistically, and I've only ever had two infections in the entire time I've been getting tattooed, both of which were very bad, but, um, it's been a very long time. These aren't things that I really even actively am concerned with. with that said, I guess I should talk about my, uh, <laughs> my session, uh, finally. I just had so much to talk about about my ears and, and last time I was uh, sidetracked with my eyelid tattoo blowback uh, my ear tattoos have creeped out onto my YouTube and they're not getting the same uh, visceral reaction for whatever reason there are much more distinct potent uh, in your face tattoo but for whatever reason these tiny bats had tripped people up a lot more uh, those things I'll never understand, but then again, I'm not most people. So anyway, Rick and I had a session this week. We did uh, this guy here again. The only thing we didn't get to was the, uh, the white or bone white that we did last time. But because we backed up the black again, um, this was already all done. So the, uh, the white and uh, opaque tones that are in there um, pop off that freshened up black. With that said, uh, we did the same idea with all the different uh, colors that we have up here. Um, advancing down, this area in here has been a bitch. It's, you can see it in the connection where it is all one piece, but this is the weakest part of it. This will just need another pass though. I think it's this whole area here on my elbow with this callus, it's just gonna be a nightmare to get it to a really solid place. And that's, I think, part of why the approach here um, has been to, you know, do the, the parts that we can get in there easily first. Well, easily, things that are only going to take two to three passes. Um, and then you, when you have the bulk of the sleeve there, you can worry about the trouble spots. Uh, similarly, like I've said, Rick has been avoiding my ditch like the plague. I have a lot of scar tissue in my ditches and I feel like Rick just doesn't want to fuck with it and I think that uh, there's been some spots, like I have a little spot of hard healing here in my bend. I think when I get into my ditch that'll be the place where we have the most risk of um, trauma, infection, uh, scar tissue, stuff like that. Um, the rest of it's pretty well smooth sailing, even my inner bicep which already has a ton of scar tissue. Um, that one I'm not really expecting too hard of a heal with, but I am expecting a bit of a hard heal uh, when we do the passes over my my ditch. Now here next week, because we got this junk out of the way, and I am expecting a fairly positive result for most of this. I think where it's weakest will be down here by my elbow, which should be no shock. Um, we're going to be getting the first pass in on this finally, and that won't be as good of a result. The first pass is never going to be as strong as second pass so where this went in really easily and it's super vibrant this being the, the morning after the tattoo um, i don't expect this to, to fade back too too much 
Uh, the places that it will will be the places that we didn't completely finish in the claw or bone textures here. Um, but, you know, my only concern is that we're making strides. I had put this video up on my TikTok and someone had said that it looked like it was basically nearly nearing completion. It's nowhere close. Like we're, I wouldn't even say we're halfway. And uh, that's just being realistic. I know that everything in here is gonna take more work. And some parts of this haven't even been passed once. And then we have this big chunk of background to do and there's more red velvet to put in. And the red velvet has to be passed again and um, possibly two to three times. Here we have red velvet just once. And then over here we have uh, red velvet twice. So it's hard to tell the difference, you know, but you can kind of see it more here. Um, even one pass, it's staying, but it definitely needs to be firmed up. All of it will need to be done as much as we did up top, where we have this whole chunk up here looking the way it does. All of that has to be carried forward everywhere else. So when you consider how much um, attention and focus has been given to the top part of this, you scale that out to the rest of the sleeve and suddenly my 60 to 80 session prediction is making a lot more sense. For the people who don't know where that time is going, um, some parts of the sleeve haven't even been done once yet. And that doesn't really give me concern. I think it would terrify most people. But because I would be in here getting tattooed anyway most weeks, um, the idea of an ongoing project is like, well, realistically, I'm probably only going to have one more crack at my sleeves. Now, I have joked about uh, eventually tearing the rose sleeve down and doing another sleeve over top of it because the rose sleeve is largely... Um, an evidence-based uh, experiment, something to put out into the world to um, win trust in this sort of uh, genre of tattooing. It did the trick. Um, my neck, similarly, seems to influence a lot of people. Um, most people don't assume that a lot of this stuff was done over blackout, though, so uh, I passed the Turin test, or whatever the hell it is, where um, you've gone too far, you've done too well at something, and um, people don't don't understand that it was ever blackout at this point, and so I've almost made it too good. Whereas where this sleeve is right now, um, parts of it look very, very good, and parts of it look pretty terrible, and so it's still doing the job of explaining what's happening. Whereas this sleeve doesn't really tell that story anymore. Like It doesn't really speak, this was done over black. It looks like an alternative black and gray with color, which is what this can look like. Um, similarly to my neck and all of this stuff on my face, it got to a place where it was too good to understand it as blackout, where it could, most people are going to expect that what you can do over black is going to be limited and not very nice. Um, some of the work that I've done has um, pushed through that ceiling and uh, instead of achieving the goal I set for it, now is uh, almost taking away from the mission. <laughs> Unless you know me and have followed my journey, this doesn't present as blackout. So it gets a little counterintuitive when you get to a place of mastery with it. Similarly to uh, that uh, uh, Clayton Diaz with the Japanese Koi sleeve, um, he's made that almost too good and most people won't understand that as a blackout tattoo. And if you do explain it to them, they'll call you a liar or um, they'll say it was added or some other fucking thing. I don't understand the minds of these people on a working level. I just understand the result that, that happens. Um, like you'll get people, I had a tattooer come into my comments the other day. He's like, I just want to make sure everyone understands not everybody can achieve this result. Uh, some skin tones work for this and others. It's like, dude, just say you haven't tried this and fucking move on. I'm not saying that isn't necessarily true, but you will get some result. Even if you put red over the blackest black on the darkest skin individual, there will be something there to show for it. There absolutely will be. Same, any color. Any color. There will be some distinction in what you've done when you tattooed this person. There won't be nothing. That's not what happens. From there, it's just understanding that these things take time. Like certain colors take 
Um, if you want them bright and bold, certain colors take more work. That's all there really is to it. There's no, there's no secret magic to it though. There's no lucky skin tones that, you know, th this works. I'm not saying some skin tones don't show it better. That that is definitely true. That's true for all tattoos. But it doesn't mean that you can never do this unless you have a certain skin tone. So I just want to put that up front because like if I had darker skin, I would still be doing this just because I know it's achievable. If I run a red line over any tattoo, when it heals, there will be some distinction there. That's a proven fact now. I've seen it done here at the shop enough times on different people and cover-ups that it's, it's not up for debate. There will be something there. With that said, I'm really happy with how this came out. I like how this whole sleeve is coming together now. Um, we're actually a little farther along at this this time. Like I figured we'd be not so far along at this by this time um, in the year. Here we are, it's still 2023. For those of you watching this, it'll be 2024. I have a few appointments left this year. I have one more coming up with Terry and I have one more coming up with Rick. And then I'm gonna do a big video kind of detailing everything I did this year and going over um, quite a few of my new projects I have for next year. Although I will say I don't think that next year could possibly be as um, dynamic, I, I'll say dynamic and interesting as this year was from a, a science perspective. I think when you're achieving great results every week now, um, it gets into diminishing returns, whereas the first few big leaps you take in any uh, given area in life, I think people are more fascinated or impressed by. And uh, I think that as this journey goes on, um, as it ebbs and flows, I think the interest wanes and, and your discoveries are, are lesser and you just you have more good results more often and people get um, conditioned to that and uh, used to that and you don't get the the viral pop that you do early on when you're charting new territory and covering new ground and I say new and people say oh well lucky diamond rich did that shit first it's like well no he did a version of what I'm doing and he didn't do nearly as much those are facts um, and they also no one no one during at any point during that project was showing it off for the masses to consume either no one was explaining any part of it and there was it was very very much kept in the dark it still is there are very limited photos evidence uh, videos anything related to any of that tattoo work that was done so as far as I'm concerned that project may as well not exist in the zeitgeist it's only going to be weirdos and fucking super nerds of this culture that even know that stuff happened so that doesn't take away the value that it was done but as far as the world is concerned it may as well not exist because it was never explained never talked about and who knows how it's doing that today you know um if you're going to do these kinds of projects they should be for the betterment of the industry in general i think not just so you can you know have a laugh at what you did and and uh and the world gets nowhere from it um it's not to say that there isn't intrinsic value in doing this work, but there's more value in explaining it to others so that they can do it as well. And uh, like we've been doing at the shop here, this provides people a second go at um, their tattoos or, or third go or however many goes they want. Whereas a lot of the industry is telling people that you've got one chance at this and once you're done that, you're fucked. Um, we're being the voice of hope here and uh, trying to fan that flame, get it out there to as many people as possible, um, just for the sake of it, you know? Like, yeah, sure, this YouTube channel makes me a little bit of money, but trust me, the amount of work that I put into my social media, the return is not worth the investment if that was the reason. I would also be running a lot more, I've, I've had lots of uh, companies reach out to me offering me products to sell on my YouTube videos, for example. I should, I could be selling you guys hair dryers and fucking uh, coffee and underwear and all kinds of fucking things by now. And I haven't done any of that. I didn't do any of that with my Instagram. I got a little bit into t-shirt modeling, but I didn't do a whole lot of it. 
Uh, this is never the goal. I make enough money in my day job, and this, if I ever become dependent on my YouTube, I'm basically fucked anyway. Because as I've learned with my Instagram, that shit can be taken away from you without reason, any moment, any day. So don't get reliant on social media for your income. And in anyone out there that's watching this, if you are, you better have a backup plan because that stuff is fucking, that is not foolproof. That's a card house and it can be gone tomorrow. So it's a nice little side hustle, but if you're doing this for the money, you're doing it for the wrong reason and it could fucking be gone tomorrow, son. <laughs> anyway, show this off again. The whole stretch of the arm is coming together. And again, we're going to be in here next. And I've got a session with Terry coming up where we're going to be working on my right sleeve again. That's coming up tomorrow, so I'll be talking to you guys again soon. Have a great day.